Welcome to another episode of It Resolves. My name is Kevin. My name's Will. I didn't know where that was going at first, so right? that was I was ready for anything. I got so distracted by the bars on the screen. They were huge. Yeah. Yeah, our audio input was like massively turned up from the recording that we did, which may or may not have gone up yesterday. Oh. So if it did, tell us what you think about it. We're pretty proud of that. I just want to point out. It was fun. It was a lot fun of fun. Fun to make. It was really cool. Yeah. If you, if it's not up, this means literally nothing to you. But there will be a video coming out soon. Perhaps. And Probably. it's going to be exciting. Yeah. Yeah. Anyway, I've missed you. <laughs> Hi. Welcome back. It's great. It's great that you're here. It's great that Kevin's here. Um, did I say my name? I'm Will. Uh, I don't remember. Yes, I think you did. Okay. Guys, welcome to the podcast episode, episode 92. We are getting really close Shoot, to that 100. To 100. We missed our year anniversary. We didn't do anything yeah. for it. So. Ooh, happy year anniversary. Yeah, that was April it's the, 30th. Um, it's the paper one, paper anniversary. Yeah. If you know you're married. It's oh. the paper. Are we married? To the podcast. Oh, okay. To the grind. To the grind. To the game. Get with it. Married to the game. Guys, we got a fun <laughs> episode for you today. Uh, we, of course, are going to kick off with our random card of the day. Then we are going to talk about, well, Will is going to talk about brewing with Dominaria. There's a lot of cool brews out there that he has let me know about. Uh, so hopefully you guys are excited about this. You don't know what's coming. He's hinted at them. Uh, I'm also going to talk about some popper cards from Dominaria that I'm expecting to see because... There's actually a good bit of popper stuff yeah. in this. Yeah, popper, um, popper's up and coming. It's always fun to play. Oh um, yeah, so it's awesome. Yeah, we want to uh, super take accessible. A look at that. That's always fun. Yeah. So then we have, of course, our question of the week, and then our Cracker Packs sponsored by Grand Slam. They are back sponsoring the Cracker Packs, so we greatly appreciate that. Their link is in the description. Yes, you very check cool. Them out. Thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you. Absolutely. So let's kick it off with our random card of the day in three, two, one. Hmm. Landbind Ritual. <laughs> it's a sorcery for three colorless and two white. You gain two life for each planes you control. It's not good, right? No. It's like bad. there's there's no way that you would play this ever. It's very bad. Yeah. Um even in like a mono white deck that only I just runs. Don't think... Yeah. Unless the only situation I could see is because this was printed in Zendikar, there was the Zendikar it was the life gain beast guy that like if oh, you yeah, had yeah. so much life you won the game yes maybe um, if you got Eldar that guardian. It, no that's the cat combo um <laughs> Eldar guardian isn't that a guardian or something i don't know we're talking about the wrong thing right now anyway um oh you're right it's definitely yeah that's, what is that name that's from kaladesh anyway um the only reason I could see playing this was if you got that pack one or something like that and you happen to find this in a later pack and it's like well I mean, I need to gain life, so... Hold on. I'll, I'll go name for that. Card. You win <laughs> the game. You're talking to the Griffin guy, right? Uh, yeah, I believe. 40. This is what we do in the middle of podcast episodes. It's totally fun. Well, you gotta know. It's important. It is... There you go. Felidar Sovereign. Okay, you were close. I was close. <laughs> but yeah, if you have the Sovereign, like, pack yeah. one, and... <sighs> If you just needed life gain, maybe? I, that's like the only reason I could see getting this. You're talking about in limited? In limited. Taking Felidar Sovereign. Sovereign. Yeah. And then... Here's my thing. It's I, the old, you wouldn't pick the Sovereign, though, in limited. No. <laughs> like, it's not that good. Because you're going for life gain in a, in a format that is all about beating <laughs> I was going to say. Like, so, no. Zendikar, I, if you don't know, was like a ton of one mana two twos and stuff like that. It was just super aggressive. So, like, it just would not make sense. No. I don't think so. No. I don't I, think this, this is, is playable card. in any this way. Card. You can't, it's really bad. Why is it an uncommon? That's it's what's uncommon. so stupid. Like, it's a mm. five drop, too. Like, I mean, well, if this was, so if this was like three mana. But you're, then you're only getting six life off of a three mana. Well, but you could play three. it later on and then also play something I'm else, talking you know like, I mean? as soon as, like, on curve, you're only getting, yeah, like, this know, you're at least but, getting ten, which is half your life back, which is kind of good. Mean, yeah, but. It's not good it's enough to play. So not good. No. The art's kind of cool. It's interesting. Her face looks funny. <laughs> <laughs> All right, brewing with dominaria. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Um, it's funny that we talk about life gain. So, uh, let's talk sources really quick. So, as you know, uh, we have our own brews that we share. Sometimes we talk about other people's stuff frequently because there are far more uh talented gifted deck makers out there than, than that is one so of us. true um so please go find the 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 original content mm -hmm. if you'd like to know more things about the things um 
But be that as it may, this got my attention and it's stuff that I wanted to bring uh, to you and to give to maybe surprise him a little bit. So he, you might not have known this going in, into the episode or not, but we all know you don't particularly care about standard. Yes. Because yeah, you're a magic true. hipster. I am a magic hipster. <laughs> However, <laughs> all of these brews are in standard that I'm going to talk about. Oh, okay. But some of them play like a modern deck. That's exciting to me. These are sweet. Okay. The first one... I am open to uh, to having uh, my mind changed here. The most exciting ones um, were brought to us on Gathering Magic, a great resource if yeah, you are absolutely. curious about anything magic. Gathering Magic is awesome. Um, by Ali Antrazi? Antrazi? I don't know if I said your name right. Um, he makes decks. He's known for making decks over there. Um, and these are just sweet. Pristine. Pristine. So let's talk about <laughs> the first one. Um... It's cleverly titled Son of a Lich. <laughs> All right, I'm sold already. Son S U N of a Lich. <laughs> and it's kind of a it's a combo esque deck. Is it an approach deck? Yes. Okay. It's an approach deck with Lich's Mastery. Which does oh, so much. <laughs> <clears throat> oh, this is oh, okay. Yeah. For six mana. It's a legendary enchantment. It is hexproof. Okay. It says you can't lose the game. It says, whenever you gain life, draw that many cards. Whenever you lose life for each one life you lost, exile a permanent you control or a card from your hand or graveyard. Okay. Okay. When Lich's Mastery leaves the battlefield, you lose the game. Okay. Okay. Well, they use Approach of the Second Sun as their win con for this. Okay. Which kind of makes sense. Yeah. It's it's kind of like a, 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 not turn two, but like it's a two turn kind of wing clock there. Sure. Cast approach, you gain seven life, mm -hmm. you draw that many cards, but approach is one of those cards, so then you cast the next turn and win. Yeah. Pretty simple. Makes sense. Yep. So then it's it's built around protecting that. You've got spells, so many removal spells. It even runs Moment of Craving. Which That's is, interesting. Well, here's the thing. It hits a lot though, I guess. Um, hits well, less now that uh That's a good point. Less now that Dominary is in. Yeah. However, uh it's this deck improves any spell that lets you gain life tremendously because you draw cards off of it. Sure. So this just became a removal and draw two card spell for two mana. Yeah, that's really good. Right. Um, you get, but the the bigger one is Varaska's Contempt, which is just Such a good crisp card. now. Yeah. Exile, uh, exile, you gain two life for four. <laughs> that's way better than um, what's the the four mana? Uh, you get two energy, draw two, scry two. Oh, um... Where of it? No. No. I don't... I know the card. I can picture the art, um, and I can't think of the name. Yeah. It's a good card, but it's not that good. I remember. That's fine. Um, yeah. Glimmer of Genius. Glimmer of Genius. Coming through. I dig it's it. It's way better. Yeah, um, yeah. <clears throat> that's fine. Uh, <laughs> Scott Fatal Push, of course. Settle the Wreckage. Such a good awesome. card. Awesome. Yeah. Anything here that's going to gain you life. Fumigate is fantastic. Yeah. Um. So, this deck plays off of Mastermind's Inquisition as well. Interesting. Okay. Right? Well, it's got, it's got two copies main board, mm -hmm. which essentially, as you know, just serve as tutors for yeah. cons. So you get two extra draws of whichever piece of the combo you need, basically. That's pretty Think sweet. Think about that. Yeah, I dig that. Um, so it's awesome. This deck protects itself very well. On turn four, if you've not already found both pieces, you find at least one. Mm -hmm. You put yourself in a pretty good advantage. Yeah, yeah. And of course you want to get... Um, which is mastery out first. So now yeah. all your removal just keeps you, excuse me, keeps you drawing cards, et cetera, sure. et cetera. Um, so it's sweet. I ha I couldn't find any test footage of this of this deck being played or anything like that. So I don't know how well it matches up. I'm sure we'll see it soon, though. Hopefully, yeah. Um, these are kind of fringe because standard, as we know, mm -hmm. it's in the the beginning stages of a new set. Mm -hmm. So we see a lot of aggro decks come out in the fold. Yeah, I was gonna say, I think it's cool mm -hmm. that the first deck we're talking about here is not an aggro deck because so often most of them are not. That we'll yeah, talk about today. I th I think it's interesting. This always happens if you haven't played standard for very long or you haven't really been into Magic for very long. You may not know this, but any time a new set comes in, right, almost right, right. any time, <clears throat> I should say. Um, Aggro decks tend to be the dominant uh, archetype over the first few months, two to three months generally, I would say. Um, yeah, maybe maybe not quite that long, but sure. it kind of depends on the format a little bit. It definitely depends on the format, or but the, yeah. It's, not the format, the meta. It's, it's interesting, though, because uh, 
at some point during that time, we always see a control deck or a combo deck, mm -hmm. something kind of come along and it kind of starts to take over. Sure. It may not take over the entire format, but we do start to see sort of that shift back towards the later decks and like sure. the mid to late game strategies. So there was a Magic Online uh, tournament recently. That's mm -hmm. our like latest standard legal stuff with Dominaria, mm -hmm. area, right? This is the latest numbers we got. Um, and six of the eight... <clears throat> Six of the eight top eight decks were aggro decks. Oh, yeah. I actually talked about that in a weekly ramble. Oh, well, good. Watch that series. I'll reiterate, though. <laughs> two two uh, blue-white control decks yep. played. So um, already we see control being competitive, and I think Dominaria gives an edge to mm -hmm. the control. And we'll talk about why. Um, to very Right now. Yep, that's it. <laughs> um, so Son of a Lich, very sweet. It is simple. Yeah. It's probably... I'm not going to say the easiest deck we're going to talk about today, but okay. um, it's simple. You want to gain life, draw cards, and play approach. And now you can't lose with your lich friend out there. Your lich friend. Yeah. I, I guess it. you kind of become a lich. Whatever. Anyway, <laughs> the next one is a deck that Parks has mused about for a while. You yeah. Know Parks. Love you know him. him you yeah, love him. Whatever. <laughs> um, Bant Super Friends. It's standard. Yeah. It's, it's possible. as a thing. It's going to be cool. Yeah. I think if, if anyone plays it. Um, and... I'm, I'm not going to talk about reinventing Super Friends here. You play Planeswalkers and you do Super Friend things. Yeah. Sweet. Um, but Teferi, I think, easily is the strongest Planeswalker. Oh my gosh. Uh, in standard right now. So good. With his with his plus one, he essentially becomes three mana. Obviously, you have to cast him on turn three. Right. But a three mana Planeswalker with this package mm -hmm. is nuts. Yeah. yeah it's yeah. so good. Um this very simply plays planeswalkers, protects planeswalkers. Mm -hmm. Right? Uh, we'll go over some of the walkers here. A Johnny, Karn, of course. Uh, Nissa, Dovin. Um, oh. He's a little utility. And I mean, with it being standard, you don't have that access to a wide list of planeswalkers yeah, necessarily. Yeah. So he fits the colors. Um, it just works. Uh, two Teferi, three Gideon of the Trials. Of course, his, um, his emblem ability. Just gives you so much power. Yeah. Uh, not being able to lose the game because of... It's the inevitability thing, right? Right. Like, if you get another Gideon out, then you're just good. Yeah, you're fine. Like, uh, a common problem with some Super Friends lists is if a if a player chooses to ignore the, your walkers and come mm -hmm. for you, you don't always have a way to, like, stay safe. Yeah. Um, some Planeswalkers don't make, like, dudes, don't make tokens or anything like that. Yeah. Um, Gideon basically says you have to kill Gideon. Yeah. And so it like takes the focus off of your right. life total and puts it back onto Gideon, which is exactly what you want because it yeah. stalls, but it also protects you. Yep. So. Um, and then there are three Nissa Steward of Elementals. I um, love this card. So the two Nissas, or excuse, um, yeah, the two Nissas in the list provide your uh, your threats really in man lands. One mm -hmm. makes uh, five, five lands. The other just sends like XX Elementals, right? Yep. Um, Plus, they yeah. the, this Nissa specifically, oh, no, the Steward, five fives. Um, it scales just so well. Mm -hmm. Oh yeah, that is like the best thing. That's why I was so excited about this when it was first spoiled. I got really excited about this yeah. because it does scale so well. Um, and what I actually what I found is really interesting. And um, this is a small tangent, but Brawl. Mm -hmm. uh, if you play Maldrotha, mm -hmm. the Sultai, excuse me, the Bug Command or uh, Brawl Commander. Um, it plays stuff from your graveyard, right? You can yeah. play one card of each type from your graveyard per turn. Mm -hmm. And so you can play Nissa very early on, and it's fine. It doesn't matter if she dies, because you get to scale her with it at As any point in going, the game. So like, if it's okay. late game, you will still be able to play her if you mm -hmm. have not already. You know what I mean? Yeah. It's like a really cool... It's not. I wouldn't really call it a combo, but it's just kind of a nice little interaction sure. between the two, which I find interesting. Oh, it's great. Yeah. Um, this was... When it got spoiled, we talked yeah. about it. Um, it was probably one of my favorite spoilers from Monquette. Yeah. Uh, she's awesome. I pulled one. I did one. you really? I did. I don't think I actually got one. I did. I haven't filled out playset or anything, but I do have one. Yeah. Um, I'm she's surprised I didn't get one because I pulled like four we or five boxes. A, we opened a lot of Monquette. Yeah. Might need to open some more. <laughs> or, or just buy the singles. Yeah. Well. <laughs> <laughs> Someone likes opening packs, but I like saving I money. Okay. <laughs> um, Oath of Teferi. Is kind of a uh, powerhouse in this deck. Mm. Lets you activate loyalty abilities twice. Um, that is awesome. Yes, it's fantastic. Uh, if you think about Teferi's plus one, you've yeah. untapped four lands now. 
It's true. After you do whatever you want, you have four open mana. Mm. Oh, oh, say less. <laughs> that's sweet. <laughs> yeah, that's just great. Yeah, that is awesome. Um, it it's great to leave up stuff. Uh, I mean, we talked about it for removal, for card draw, all that stuff. So, mm-hmm. uh, A plus. Um, so I don't want to harp too much on that because with Super Friends list, especially, they get tailored to how you kind of want to play it. Mm-hmm. Um, this one in particular is a little more controlly, a little more protective of its walkers, which makes sense. Yeah. Um, I think it's probably the the best version of Super Friends that you'll get right now. Mm-hmm. Um, but it is not as uh, aggressive, really, as some sure. other ones could be. Um, your Nissas obviously do give you give you the five fives to, yeah, yeah, yeah. to smash face, so that's nice. Main lanes are good. Um, however, I want you not to look at that yet. Okay. This was, this is, I think, my second favorite deck that I okay. found today. All right. Um, Parks's deck we'll talk about is probably okay. my favorite. Yeah, yeah, that's a good um, one because it hits close to home, and I think it's really viable. Yeah, this deck is the deck that I want you to play in standard. Tell me why. It's called Mastermind Ramp. Okay, I already like it. Mastermind's Inquisition, buddy. Yeah. You remember what it does? Oh, yeah. Want to tell the people? It, uh, so it has two modes. Correct. Uh, you can fetch a card from your deck. Correct. Or fetch one from outside the game. No! So... I don't remember because I right. haven't ever played with it. Is that correct? That's right. Okay. So what you're saying is you could make a toolbox deck. You could make a toolbox deck, which I do love toolbox decks. <laughs> you can make a toolbox deck in standard I'm, apparently is you're there a, telling me I can would there be a card that I want to want a toolbox for it I turns out there are great. one two three, <laughs> about eight and what are those eight <clears throat> we'll talk about the best ones okay uh, Torment of Hailfire oh yes bring it back <laughs> uh, so we tried brewing with this a little while ago we had some um, fun with it. We did have a lot of fun. Uh, it all has actually found its place not in standard, though. You say that, but Kess. Of course. I'm not saying no. Kess Commander. She copy spells, right? Yes. You yeah. get to play it twice, basically. You know you can do that in standard right now? Yeah. Tell me more. You know? Tell me more. Uh, <laughs> so you have two ways, technically. Swarm Intelligence is the first one from our okay, Devastation. Okay, yeah. Right. For seven mana, mm. copy... Um, Target answer server, you want to go, blah, blah, blah. Okay, that's cool. Um, but for, on turn five, oh. it's five mana spell, the Mirari Conjecture. Oh, it's one of the, I forgot about that card. Right? The Saga. Return target instant or sorcery card from Graver to your hand. That's its first two modes. So you get a lot of utility there and being able to yeah. play stuff and then just bring it back if you want. Then, of course, mode three, until end of turn, whenever you cast an instant or sorcery spell, uh, copy it, you can choose new targets for the copy oh i like that so i love that right dude that's pretty sick <laughs> uh, isn't it uh second one if you need to beat face what's the biggest beatiest faciest thing you can think of right now the big legendary dino oh zakama zakama the cute one yeah. oh yeah i hope you show the people because she is just wonderful <laughs> vigilance reach trample when it enters the battlefield if you cast it untap all lands you control isn't that nice? Do you want to just do whatever whatever so else you good. want? Uh, she, she is so broken. <laughs> so all of this is sideboard, by the way. Of course. Yeah, of course. These things because you don't you don't need to have the main board to pull them out. Yeah. Um, you have well, come back. My iPad. <laughs> Our revelation: approach of the second son in the sideboard. <laughs> If you just need to win off approach. Sure. Why not? <laughs> exactly. Why not? It's got so many win cons in the sideboard. Yeah. So let's talk about how it gets there. Um, it runs, its instants are mostly uh, removal spells, so you sure. see things like Cast Down, uh, Moment of Craving, again, mm. uh, Fatal Push, of course, and Four Veracity's Contempt, because it's the best removal yeah. standard right now, I think. Um, yeah, definitely. So, uh, Cast Down, I'm not sold on, necessarily, because it destroys non-legendaries. Yeah, and legendaries are going to be a big thing right now, I imagine. Are, and not only that, but we also still have the Scarab God running around That's wreaking havoc. Yeah. Um, we also have uh, Hezret as well. Yeah. Know, which Though I will say, it does hit some of the aggro, like Steel Leaf Champion. Right? Sure. Oh, like, sure. That's a great spell against Steel Leaf Champion. There are, there are which plenty is... of things it does hit. Yeah, I'm not yeah. saying don't run it. Um, it is just a one of. Yeah, um, okay. In this list in particular. Yeah, so. Yeah. Maybe you side more 
if you have the slots for it. Maybe so. If it's a if it's a red deck win. Yeah, sort of, I don't know if we can call it Ramen Up Red anymore because no, I don't think so. Yeah, mm. we'll find your name. Yeah. Um, <laughs> uh, some sorceries. Battle of the Bridge, of course, is another removal. Come back, you rat. <laughs> You're fighting with Twitch. <laughs> um, Doomfall, Fumigate, all yeah. these removal things, and of course, Mastermind's Activate. Mm-hmm. Uh, and then it's ramp spring to mind hour of promise mm-hmm. get lands on the field do like hour of promise keep them there yeah um we run a sandworm convergence because <laughs> why not <laughs> yes if you're if you're ramping why not ramp into that i love that right That's so funny um profane procession acts as utility and removal as well Okay. You get to transform it and take some win cons if you're scary things absolutely um so that's nice if you're ramping again you can get to that five exile thing pretty quickly, yeah. which is nice. Uh, Azor's Gateway as an artifact. The Immortal Sun as an artifact. Wow. Yeah, That's wow. awesome. Yeah, wow. All if right. you're ramping, why not yeah, draw two why cards not? every turn? And now everything is cheaper anyway. That's really cool, actually. Man, I dig this deck. It's very fun. Yeah. Um, I love toolbox decks for anybody that doesn't know. It's, They're like one of my favorites. It's, um, it's land base is very... Uh, what's the right word? I wanted to say eclectic. It's got a bunch of different ones. Sure, of like, course. Uh, I mean, I feel like it would have to. You run so many, uh, so many deserts, um, blooming, uh, if near dead lands, desert of the glorified, desert of the indomitable, um, scavenger grounds, Shafet dooms, a ship oasis, <laughs> all the like a bunch of different <laughs> things, just to be able to do stuff. Yeah, if you'd like, like this, this deck has everything. <laughs> desert. Toolboxes. <laughs> I love this. <laughs> it's great fun. That's um, so good. So, uh. it my my <laughs> my. Fe- I'm sorry, that's so funny. My fear is that it. This deck has <laughs> <laughs> standards hottest deck. Standards hottest. Mastermind deck. ramp. All right. Um, <laughs> sorry that just happened, everybody. Uh, SNL, nobody gets yeah if anybody doesn't you get need that to, you need to be educated you catch up get uh yeah he's not on the show anymore but hey and, sorry anyway my fear for this deck yeah. is that it doesn't protect itself enough while ramping that's always a downfall right. of toolbox decks right. so yeah I buy that right so in this format right now uh, aggro decks are running everywhere and they're beating everyone's yeah. face so yeah, yeah. that's my fear um I mean maybe you throw some fogs in there I yeah, know. I mean, maybe. Yeah, and I do Hazel think Fallen, with uh, stuff like Moment of Craving um, and uh, what was the other card that gained you life? Fumigate. Um, mm-hmm. Like, there is some built-in kind of, like, life gain, which is pseudo-protection which against you, aggro decks. Yeah, which you kind of But, need. like, I, I, don't, I would question whether that's really enough because by turn mm-hmm. five, they're kind of hoping to finish you off pretty quickly at sure. that point. And, yeah, you might have gained a couple life off of some Moment of Cravings or something like that, mm-hmm. but if you're running... Oh, million, and Vraska's Contempt as well. Uh, Vraska's Contempt, fair, but, like, I don't know. I just, I, I would wonder about right, that, right. too. That definitely seems fear. like a, <clears throat> an issue with that one. That's my fear. Um, now, if you can get to your... Uh, really, optimally, you want to be at about, I'd say, six mana. Yeah. What, at whatever turn you get to, you just want access to six mana to sure, be able to sure. do a lot of stuff. Um, obviously sandworm costs more than that. Um, other things cost more than that, but let's say you, I mean, you might have the immortal sun. Yeah. I don't know. Yeah, what yeah. have you. Um, but yeah, this deck gives you a lot. I, uh, yeah. And I like that idea. I like the idea of having a toolbox second standard, being able to win no matter what matchup you're against. Yes. You know what I mean? Like being able to tailor your, your win con based off of that, which is always the strength yeah. of a toolbox deck, right? Yes. Like that's yeah, yeah. the reason you play toolbox. Right. The goal is to be prepared but, for anything. Exactly, yeah. but it, it just has to last that long. Right, and that's my one, like, yeah. I don't know. It's the hard part. Um, it still looks very fun, though. No? Yeah, definitely. Yeah? I dig I, it. I kind of want to play it, but I would ruin it. I would. You're not a toolbox player, are um, you? No, I'm not. I would love to. <laughs> Mystical Teachings or whatever, the popper deck is really yeah. sweet. I love that deck. I'm telling you, man. You should play standing with me. Yeah, yeah. The next one we're going to talk about is uh, Green White Tokens. Okay. So we haven't had a solid token deck in a while, and this is being played in a few places, tested. I don't think it broke the top eight in MPGO. I didn't not see it in there. I don't think it there did. was a Selesnya aggro, but it wasn't green. Right, tokens. it wasn't tokens, but it uses a lot of the same cards. Uh, yeah, particularly yeah. the big one, uh, Shalai Voice of Plenty, oh, is so good. 
Like this card is insane. How this card was printed. So okay, here's the thing about this card. At it's rare? a three four flying for four. Already. In a limited environment, that's great. You take that and you're happy with it. It like I think you take it every time. Honestly, yeah, maybe not the turn. Honestly, yeah, it's just really good. Three four in the air is not. That's nothing to shake a stick at. Is that a thing? Yeah. Pigskin. Um <laughs> How about let's add a little bit more? Okay, you want to let's add a little bit more. Okay. Let's let's okay. give you me you okay as the the player who played Shalai, uh -huh. you and you know what? Because that's not your entire team. We'll just give them hexproof. They can't be targeted by spells, abilities, no. or walkers. Then the the control. only way they can do that is to get rid of her. Oh god, sounds interesting, right? Is but there hey, any way you know to make what? it better? I think there might be. I think yeah. If you really wanted to, yeah. just in case this wasn't enough for you, have a little bit of an activated ability. Now you have to pay a cost. Okay. Right? Okay. And it is an off-color cost. You have Ooh. to pay some green. Tricky. Yeah. Tricky. Okay. Uh, green, white. Terrible. I don't think anyone's done that. Before. No, nobody's done that. That's tough. But pump your entire team. My entire team. 1-1 one, one counter on the entire team. It's a counter? It is a counter. Not until end of turn? Not until end on of turn. On all the boys and girls. All the boys and girls. Man, school's going nuts. Yeah. What the freaking crap, R&D? Where the heck did you get this? <laughs> like, <laughs> uh, a happy place of fun times. I love this card. <laughs> She's so good. She's amazing, um, by the way. If you haven't seen any of the limited videos with, yeah. like, Marshall Sutcliffe, LSV, or whatever, that's like, I mean, of course you would take that card no matter what. That card will win you games, like, hands Absolutely. down. Absolutely. It is Absolutely. so good. Um, yeah. There's not enough good things that can be said no, about this her. This card's insane. And in a token deck especially, yeah. pumps all the boys. All the boys and girls. That's awesome. That's so good. Um, so you use things that obviously get you tokens, have um, any card that enters the battlefield effect, stuff like that. Mm -hmm. um, Adorn Pouncer comes to mind when we talk about that. I love that card. Kitty with Double Strike. Yeah. That's cool. And Eternalize. Yes. And that's super important. Um, Shauna. Oh, I like Shauna. To save Legacy. I really like this card. Mm -hmm. I'm stoked to see her in Constructed. And she's awesome in this deck in particular. Yeah, I would imagine. Um, but we'll talk about kind of the engine-esque card in this that's not Shalai necessarily. Um, you're looking at SRAM's Expertise. Okay. So this creates you tokens. 3-1-1 yeah. one, one Servo tokens. Now, after you cast it, you can cast a card in your hand that's 3 or less. So talk about some of the stuff that hits. Pride of the Conquerors. Sure. I mean, that's that's okay. That's yeah. fine. Sapperling Migration. So I just get two more tokens. Yeah. All right, that's Sounds cool. good. Uh, da, 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 where is the other one that I wanted to talk about? Uh, Servo exhi Exhibition. It's okay. It's more, okay. More tokens. More tokens, more tokens. right. Uh, Legion's Landing. Mm. History Legion's of Benalia. Oh, this card's awesome. Gets you the two two knights with yeah. Vigilance. Okay. Uh, that's cool. Aether Sphere Harvester. That's a good card, too. Man, after this deck is solid. After turn four, yeah. you get, I mean, your, your curve is so low. Yeah, I was going to say, you could probably play most of your deck. You can play most play everything, it. except for Shalai, pretty much. Mm. Yeah. Um, so you you turn on really quickly with this yeah, deck, yeah. If, you can, if you can resolve Ace Ram's expertise. Yeah, that's awesome. Right? Yeah. Now, go-wide strategies obviously lose to the same thing they've kind of always lost Humigate. <laughs> There's one that's still Board standard. Wipes. Yeah. yeah, board yeah. wipes. Board wipes, exactly. Anything that's going to shrink your team. Yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah. Um, but this competes so well with red deck wins, right? That's awesome. So well. Yeah, yeah. Um, I mean, you're because your long game just elevates. Oh yeah, definitely. so much. Uh, assuming that they <laughs> do not have uh, Hezaret throwing stuff at you. That's true. Right. That's their yeah. and that's and we talk about it, that's kind of the strength right now is they have they have reach. They have that inevitability, right. kind of. Of course. Does this deck run Anointed Procession? It better. It'll. It doesn't. That's interesting. It should though. That. Card is amazing. I just want to point out. Let's add one. Yeah. <laughs> or four or two. I, I think I two. think two is probably. I don't think right. you need a playset, but no. it's just like such a good bonus to get double tokens. Definitely. I don't know what you take out. Maybe. Yeah, that would be hard. I don't know. Hey, the Spear Harps are so good. I would brew with that though, with some anointed processions, mm -hmm. just to see. And I mean, these are brews right now. Oh yeah. Technically, absolutely. this is this is a deck that's being played, but yeah. you know. Um, I've wanted Anointed Procession to crack standard for a little while. I play uh, it a lot on MTG Arena, but right. obviously that's a little bit of a different meta than actual standard. Oh yeah, it's, it's so much more limited. Right but um, 
there's an embalm like blue white embalm deck mm -hmm. and eternalize i guess mm -hmm. uh where you play things like you play the one one lifelink cat that's literally just one, the little one yeah. yeah um you play the pouncer you play uh champion of wits um basically any eternalized creature you can sure. think of and then you just play anointed procession you get so much value out of it um you play the anointer priest so you gain a ton of life nice um that's really clever it's actually really really sweet because you <clears throat> if you play out the procession and theoretically i've done this a couple times where i'll have two or three processions out and then i'll like embalm an anointer priest and i'll end wow. up with like three or four triggers for every token i get but yeah. i get like four tokens off of every embalm trigger and so my life total, I think the highest I ever got up to is like 60 or 70 life. That's stupid. But like, it's so sweet. It's just satisfying, honestly. It's, that's self-indulgence at that point. But it's really fun. <laughs> uh, yes. And you get triggers off of all of it. So like, if you have three champion of wits coming into play, especially out of the graveyard, then you get four cards, discard two for each. So it fuels your graveyard even more. It's really sweet. Good God. It's a fun game. Um, as I pull up information about some cards I had questions on in the, in the next deck, um, what do you think of the four so far? I really dig them. I like that there's some variety. Like, there's a tokens deck. Mm -hmm. Obviously, the majority of it looks like... I, I like that there's a toolbox deck, but it's obviously kind of similar to the first one, where it's a little bit focused on the combo side of things. Right. Um, which is fine with me. I love decks like that. Um, I, I'm happy that we're seeing brews for this kind of stuff so early on. You know what I mean? Like, it's cool to see some of these decks coming out where normally it's really just aggro decks. A lot of people right now, this is really the time where you see a bunch of people saying, here's a $10 budget deck that's going to win you FNM. You know, like, that's right. like the normal thing scary. that we see right now. Yeah. Um, but uh, right now, it's kind of cool to see some different stuff, I think. And I do really like token strategies, weirdly, mm -hmm. because I really don't like creature-based decks most of the time. Um, but green-white tokens is always just like a solid deck. Um be can be, stuff. Yeah. can be. Not always in standard. Not in um, standard necessarily, but just in general. always have the support. But, yeah, of course. Um, be that as it may. I know you don't like creature decks. Yeah. But everyone likes artifact decks, right? Yeah. I like this deck. <laughs> <laughs> this deck... This deck is so good. Parks made. And... Thank you, Parks, for existing. I think it honestly has the potential to compete with a lot of tier 1 decks right now. Yeah. Um, I don't know why people didn't sooner maybe because it was it was missing a big big win a maybe. big scary thing <laughs> yeah but let's talk about that so i i don't know what he's named just yet constructs maybe that's that probably the great name um it's it's stupid scary yeah so we'll talk about some of the things uh obviously walking ballista uh i'm gonna go over the list first of just the creatures walking ballista bomet courier sparring construct Metallic Mimic, Scrap Heap Scrounger, Chief of the Foundry, and Foundry Inspector. Now, uh, well, sorry, and then, uh, of course, Traxos. You can't, Traxos. You can't talk about Constructs and not Gosh, that's such a good Traxos. card. Yeah, yeah. So, <laughs> where to start? Where to begin? Um, well, let's start with Traxos, because I think that this is the spiciest card here. Yeah. Uh, Traxos is so cheap. Comes in on turn four. If you didn't ramp. Right, if you didn't ramp. And it, this has no ramp, so... Yeah. Well, not true. Uh, Foundry Inspector makes things cost less. Does it have the Surveyor in it, did you say? Skittering Surveyor? No. Okay, just wonder. What's that do? It, like, finds you a land. Psh, you don't need that. You don't need that garbage. Everyone's so cheap. <laughs> you don't need that. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Like, your most expensive spell is, uh... Maybe Karn? Well, no, it would be Karn and Traxos. Yeah, Traxos. But... What makes Traxos able to come in on turn four is that it doesn't untap. Comes mm -hmm. in tap, doesn't untap during your untap step. Mm -hmm. It does get untapped whenever you play a historic spell, which is walkers, legendary creatures, legendary enchantments, and um, sagas. Um, sagas. And uh, there's one more. God, what is it's pretty important oh one. The colorless thing. Oh, um, artifacts. Wait, but everything in this deck is an artifact. Was that intentional? What you mean to say is, yeah. after I've resolved Traxos, mm. I have any any of my creatures untap them and put a scary 7-7. Seven, seven That's what it I sounds like. Well, doesn't that sound great? <laughs> and yes, it does. Um, 
when when Parks and I were we were hanging out, we were talking to <laughs> acting, acting. Uh, one of his buddies mentioned that this deck doesn't really sure it does all this stuff, it doesn't refuel, which is one of the weaknesses you might sure. think about. Uh, but Karn, Karn, <laughs> Bowmackery, Bowmackery. Its that's refuel a good point. is the same as the red deck right now because that's, that's all the red sweet. deck is. Yeah, yeah. And we see it's consistent and it's great. Yeah. Right. So. That's a good point. I say it does not have that issue. Uh, its strength is in its synergy, of course. Um, you have cards like Metallic Mimic. It's not a construct, but you name construct. Every construct comes in counters. Mm -hmm. Cool. That's sweet. Uh, you have Chief of the Foundry. Other artifact creatures you control get plus one, plus one. So really, Lords for Dave. Yeah. That's awesome. Um, you have the... I always forget his name. Um... The Foundry Inspector, excuse me, that makes your artifacts cost one less. Yep. Right, so everyone now is cheaper. So God, this the so synergy sweet. in the creature package <laughs> is awesome. Karn just gives you utility. Yeah. Um, and it's got removal here as well. So Fatal Push, of course, it's a mainstay. But yeah. then the best removal for this deck specifically, Unlicensed Disintegration. Yeah. Second artifact, two extra damage. Pardon me. I keep burping. <laughs> I do too, actually. I don't know why. Weird. Yeah. Regardless, this deck is <laughs> is so so synergistic. It's mm. so fluid. It's great. Um, I this is the deck I want to make. I was gonna say this more is the one I'm everything. most excited about. Now, its biggest flaw is kind of not game related at all. Okay. Its biggest flaw is that most of it is rotating soon. Yeah. So we have until the fourth quarter of the year before it rotates out. Yeah. So we have about. Like four, four months, three, four months, somewhere like that. There. Yeah. yeah. So it's in standard for a while, mm -hmm. but it's not like you, you, you probably won't see this at any pro tour. Right? No, right? probably you won't see not. it at a grand prix or anything like that. Unfortunately, just because it won't have the longevity. Because <laughs> let's just go over all the things that are rotating. Um, <laughs> it's a lot. Walking ballista, Bowmat courier, uh, metallic mimic, scrap heap scrounger, chief of the foundry, foundry inspector. So that's most of his creatures. I was going to say, that's like everything important. <laughs> yeah, that kills the deck. Um, yeah. Kills the deck, absolutely. Adventure Sphere's gone. Spire of Industry's gone. So it's lands yeah. gone too. <laughs> um, regardless though, this deck is cheaper to make because mm -hmm. people aren't playing like Chief of the Boundary really. Right, Boundary right. Inspector that much. Uh, so it's going to be cheaper to to make and pick that's up true. than some other ones. Except for um, Karn. <laughs> except for, yeah, except for Karn. Uh, and I would say Karn is probably essential in this deck. Yeah. Just because without Bomat Courier, assuming something happened to him, uh, you need other ways to... It's your way to refuel, but it actually right. also is a win condition with it in this deck specifically with, with its, making... its final ability. Sure, sure. Making um, its own because right. generally speaking, like that ability is not really that relevant, I mm -hmm. would say. And most of the decks that I think we're going to find Karn in, it's not that important. Sure. But in this, where everything is an artifact, it actually has relevance, Yeah. which I think is interesting. Yeah. And I'll do that, actually, because you utilize everything, you know? Important. Yeah. Um, yeah, I was beyond pumped. That this. looks like a sweet deck. I'm stoked about it. Yeah. Uh, that's all I've got right now. So, um, some decks I'm excited to keep brewing with are uh, Lich's Mastery. Yeah. Mastermind's Acquisition. Um, a pr I like to see that Approach is still being used yeah. so much in other decks. Uh, because it's just janky as heck, right? <laughs> I mean, yeah, but it's in a cool way, right? Oh, every jank is in a cool way. <laughs> Are you saying there's kind of jank that's not cool? I mean, that was I a can't good think sentence. Of one. Yeah, that was a good sentence. Kinds of janks that's not cool. Kinds of janks that's not cool. Anyway, um, bees knees. <laughs> there are plenty of ways to break dominaria and yeah. smash standard in the face with it. Um, so I'm really, I'm, I'm excited. I want to get you to play. I this is a standard that might get me to play. So. It looks good. If nothing else, R&D succeeded in one thing. Yes, exactly. All right. Um, so very quickly, I do want to segue into some popper cards that I'm actually just excited about. These are not deck lists. These are just a few cards that I think will hit popper. Okay. Um, I kind of picked five, and there are actually plenty more, I would say. Okay. But these are probably the five, the five that I'm most excited about. So We'll go over them very quickly. Divest is the first one. It's one black for basically duress, but for creatures and artifacts only. Um, so it lets you look at your opponent's hand. If you find a creature or an artifact, you get to pick it and they discard it. That just to me seems really good. Yeah. Um, 
it's basically the opposite of duress, which is fine. I think having that duress effect is really good. So yeah. um, I think that will hit a lot of popper decks because there's a lot of like aggro, blue aggro is really, really popular. Being able to just get rid of a card there is a good hit for um, Demir Control. You made me think of a card reading the list that I want to look up. Um, yes, and I will say, I mean, yeah, that card is on here. Yes, it's great. And I thought it was an artifact, but it's not. It's fine. No, no. Um, I was going to say, why is that not? <laughs> uh, <clears throat> um, yes, no, I, I like Divest, honestly, a little more than uh, Duress in most situations. I think so, too, especially with the metagame of Popper right now. Right, in, in, in Popper. Yeah, in Popper. Yeah. Um, just because, I mean, your elves are still strong, mm. your blue is still strong. So taking away the engines that are mostly creatures nowadays yeah. are nice. Um, I don't think... Oh, we're talking about Popper. I was going to talk about other formats for Divest, and we can say it. It will hit other formats, though. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I think. Uh, yeah. Uh, It'll definitely yeah. be in Standard. It will yeah. see play in Standard. Right. Um, I think it could be Sideboard against, uh, like, an uh, 8-rack deck or something like that. I know that's kind of silly, but, like... I don't think you side... I'm Lantern. Lantern's a good one. You yeah, might side for Lantern, I guess. Maybe so. I don't know. It's an interesting card, though. I really like it. I know. I love it. Any hand destruction spell, you know, I'm all about. Oh, yeah. If I could just One mana a hand destruction. Eight rock. Uh, so the next one's a little bit less exciting in my mind, but this is just... These are kinds of cards that we see in every single set. Mm -hmm. But this one in particular, I think, is actually really good. It's two mana for Broken Bond. It's one in a green. Destroy target artifact or enchantment and put a land from your hand onto the battlefield. So it's sort of explore mixed with, like enchantment disenchant or something that's great um this is just a really sweet card it's a great toolbox that melds the artifact and enchantment hate mm -hmm. with sort of ramping and so i think green decks will love this again it might even be more of just a sideboard card but it's going to be a really solid one so i'm excited yeah. about that mm -hmm. artificer's assistant is a one mana for a blue blue a blue one one flyer wow i can blue, talk blue a blue blue it's extra blue extra blue um, but whenever you cast a historic spell, you get to scry one. Affinity for days will love this. Oh, yeah. um, this card's really, really solid. It just keeps your deck running consistently. Being able to consistently scry, like, that's the dream. Yeah, that's it. honestly. That's, that's so good. Um, yes, it will die a lot. It doesn't matter. Well, yes, but 1-1 one, one flyers for one yeah. in particular, yeah, I yeah. am very akin to. And this has upside. Yes, so. great upside. Like this, uh, this card is it's fantastic. Yeah, absolutely. Um, you're paying for tangent for a second, if you'll indulge me. Okay. The thought of magic is that you pay for everything on the card, right? Yeah. And that's how it accrues value, uh, and that's why a lot of the old creatures don't get played in any format, like from alpha, yeah, really on up to seven and stuff like that. A lot of them don't get played because they're just too expensive for the things that they don't do. <laughs> this. For one, flies lets you scry stuff if yeah. you cast things. Even if you get a like it's one not... or two scries off of this, it's done its job, right? Like oh, yeah. that's all that it needs to do. It's just keeping your deck running consistently, making sure you get the things you need. And if it oh, needs okay. to ping through a damage or two, exactly. Right, that's it's a awesome. jump blocker. It flies. Got evasion. Yeah. Yeah, For yeah. one, it's awesome. Man. Uh, the next card, Adventurous Impulse. This is one green for, uh, basically you get to look at the top three cards of your deck and you pull a land or a creature card and put it in your hand. This okay. is sweet. Um, yes, it seems very unexciting. I get it. But uh, it's sort of like a mini Ancient Stirrings for creature yeah. decks. And we see how good Ancient Stirrings is in modern right now. <laughs> like this card, I think, will definitely see play in creature-based modern decks. Green Stompy, not modern, Hopper decks. Uh, green Stompy is very, very solid, and this just helps it ba keep those card draw right. coming. You know what I mean? So, because I don't, I haven't read this card. I don't know what it does. Um, specifically, does it? What do you do with if you whiff? Like, let's say it's all they go down to the bottom. To the bottom. Of the okay. Yes. Yeah, okay. okay. Yeah, yeah. I think it'd be even better if they went to the graveyard. I think so too, but um, I think that might even be too good for <laughs> a card two like this. And two mana, mana though, it, I wouldn't want to play it that much. I think for really? one mana, that's why it's so good. Yeah, I you suppose. know what I mean. No, you're right. You're right. Um, it just keeps you running consistently, and it finds you threats, like yep. or or lands if you need it to. So I think that's great. One of the ones I'm most excited about: 
Skirk Prospector. <laughs> Give me those goblins, baby. A goblin for one red that you can sacrifice any goblin you have and add one red mana to your mana pool. Oh. Oh. Why does every goblin either want to kill itself or kill other goblins? Because that's what goblins do. Yeah, They're so right. derpy in the best way. Yeah, you're right. This is just great. It's like, I I don't even know how how to describe this card other than it will keep you like running consistently in red, which is great. Yeah. It just lets you play out more threats and upgrade <clears throat> threats. So like if you have a goblin that isn't that good, or it's like in a board stall position and it's not helping you get there, you can use it as ramp for a bigger goblin to help you get to the win. It's just, yeah. it does so many things. It's so good. Um, this is downshifted, by the way. This was a previous uncommon, I believe. So mm -hmm. uh, to see it at common is pretty awesome. So that, those are kind of my top five, I would say, in no general order. Um, but I'm just excited. I think there's actually, normally there's like a few popper cards that I'm excited about. Yeah. And they do see some play, but it's generally like sideboard play, most of all. I think there are actually a few cards here that are like, we'll probably see them in most main decks. Like Adventurous Impulse, I expect to see in Green Stompy. Sure. Um, the Artificer's Assistant, probably in any artifact deck ever will love that you know like yeah. affinity is going to love it divest is going to be great in demir control mm -hmm. um skirt prospect prospector mono red it's going to be there um does it have enough in, in are there enough goblins yeah is, the question. is my question well they just downshifted i don't remember if it was was it hordling outburst from oh they just downshifted yes, that um um dragons or cons is that the one? No, that was Dragon Fodder, wasn't it? Or no, that was no, that was Dragon Fodder. I think I don't know, but both of them I think are mm -hmm. now at common, which means yes. Okay, so tokens. There will be tokens, tons of tokens. How bad? Um, so more, yeah, I think bad. this is gonna be worth it. Um, there's a lot of good popper stuff, guys. Yeah. This set's amazing. Yeah, this set's great. It gives us a lot of a lot of tools and fun fun toys for pretty much every format. For the most part. That people play. Yeah, that people play. Um, all right. What does Frontier get? Just kidding. <laughs> Absolutely nothing. <laughs> um, okay, so, guys, uh, question of the week time. We just asked you, now that we've actually had some time to play with Dominaria and get used to some of the cards, what are some of your personal favorite cards that you're seeing, whether you're playing with them, whether you just are happy to have this card in standard right now, whatever. Mm -hmm. Um, I'm just going to go through a few of the highlights, uh, because you guys actually really pulled through with this one. Um, <laughs> Steel Leaf Champion. Oh, yeah, baby. A lot of votes for Steel Leaf oh, Champion. Oh, yeah. Such a, a good five, card. Five, five, or three. They can't five, be four. blocked by... I said that. Yeah. <laughs> um, very, very strong card, so that, oh, no surprise there. Teferi. Marvelous. Yeah. No surprise. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Uh, Dampening Sphere. I'm assuming that's a modern player. Really? Yeah. That's awesome. I mean, it's a good card. It's a good it's sideboard a... hate card. Yes. Um, I, I'd buy that. Um, Giora, a very good brawl card, I would say. Yeah. Really good engine. Um, Lyra Dawnbringer. That's kind of cool. Um. She's gigantic. Do, do, do. She's huge. One of my favorites. And there's three votes for it, and I'm only seeing, like, five comments at one time. Uh, Slimefoot. The, like, uncommon, like, one one black and one green that, like, spits out sapperlings. Oh, yeah! Dude, the legendary guy! <laughs> the, I love what that. What is it, the stowaway? Is that his name? Yeah, he's, all, he's like, the cleaner of the weather light. Like, that's his job. Yes! Um, I love that card. He's so good, especially in limited. He's actually yeah, 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 for the stowaway. Dude, yes. He's really good. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> I got really pumped. The flavor in this set is just yeah, it's so pretty fun. solid. Uh, Karn, to nobody's surprise, is in there. Um, Shauna Sisei's Legacy, which I do really like. Um, I don't know if it's a favorite of mine, but I'm excited about that card. I think it's good. Yeah, I think it's, I mean, we've, we've seen uh, yeah. Green White crack the top eight in the tournament, so I yeah. think that's the card that it needs for its curve. It's awesome. Yes, awesome. definitely. Uh, Merfolk Trickster, I think it's interesting. Oh, God, yes. I didn't even talk about Merfolk Trickster. I Heart's love it. I love the trickster so much. <laughs> Yargle. Yeah. The vile offering is good. Josu Vess. Any vote for Squee? You know, I, I'm looking through and I don't see a vote for Squee. Um there Actually is... no. K underscore I underscore I. I is the first one is I as in 
They said, uh, squee. <laughs> really excited so about it. So they're... That's the only one that... I'm going to stick my neck out there, and this is risking it, but I am pretty sure there's an unlimited combo in standard right now with Squee. Really? With this. Um, is it unlimited? Yes. You need it's a lot with of the cards prospector. To, you need a lot of cards to do it. Yeah. You need like four or five. Because you need to be able to make it. more mana to replay Squee. Oh, no. That's it. That's the one. You just need another... Yeah. Uh, like another land, right? Because you can play Squee... You play Squee from anywhere. From anywhere. So you sack Squee. Mm -hmm. So you have one Squee on board. You have this thing. You play first Squee. Or second Squee. Legendary rule. One gets... Oh, no, wait. That's not it. It's not with the Prospector. It's with... um. Again, I'm sticking my neck up there. But we talked about it. Okay. Well, I'll make an article on that. Okay. I'll yeah, write something that. up real quick when I remember all the cards. <laughs> Speaking of Squee... Oh, was it that time? No, actually, I do have to say, um, we talked a lot about a lot of different decks in this episode, and by that I mean we'll talk a lot of, about different decks in this episode, and so um, we want to know for the question of the week this time, what deck strategy are you most excited for in Standard specifically? Are you most excited about the aggro time? Because that's... Okay. Constructs, uh, control stuff, toolbox decks, token decks. What what kind of deck are you most excited to build? Construct. Yeah. So. But yes, speaking of Squee and segueing into the Crack of Packs, sponsored by Grand Slam, Comics oh. and Collectibles, um, Squee is my new gold card. Uh, mine is the Steel Leaf Champion, because it's super good. Yeah. Look, at, I mean, these packs are just pretty, right? Oh, yeah. These the, packs are so nice. The art is fantastic. Ooh, that's a good one for uh, Limited. All right. Oh, this is an interesting saga. So I didn't get uh, Squee. I got Fall of the Thran. Ooh. Man, this is... <laughs> I keep thinking these are, like, really good cards, but it's like, yeah, it's Dominaria. Of course they're all good, right? <laughs> like, um, so Fall of the Thran is a saga. It would not be my first pick. Um, on the first uh, token, destroy all lands. On two and three, each player returns two land cards from their graveyard to the battlefield. I've actually seen this play in Limited. I just don't think it's good enough. Um, it's interesting, but it's not good enough. Um, I got Damning Sphere, which is nice, but... Not unlimited. Yeah, not unlimited. Um, so I don't have a ton of awesome stuff. Um, pick one. My rare is Dreadshade, which is probably going to be my pick. 3-3 three, three for 3, but it is 3 good black. Um, its ability is activated. Uh, Dreadshade gets... What? It's got an activated ability. I speak weird. Uh, Dreadshade gets plus one, plus one until end of turn, which is, I mean, yeah. Fire Breathing in Black is kind of cool. Right? Yeah, definitely. That's nice. Um, but That's I, a good pick. I do also have uh, some cool removal in Cast Down and Eviscerate. Wow, so, all the removal. Yeah. I mean, my Black <laughs> is strong. I probably would take Dreadshade. Yeah. Just because I feel as though threats are better than... I mean, well, in Limited, most games are one on board, right? But I will say this. I would need a bomb. Um, I also have Rona. Rona is a little bit less exciting than some of the other dual legendaries. You know what I mean? And for limited, I'm not like 100% on her. Yeah. Um, yeah, I don't... Yeah. Maybe not her. But I, I think I might actually take Eviscerate in this pack. It's good. Because yeah. Dreadshade is a good card, but my question would be bomb worthy. You know what I mean? Yeah, it's, it's good, easily but it's not amazing. With. It's right? easily dealt with. It's yeah. dealt with um, the, combat damage pretty easily. Yeah, and yeah. the new lightning bolt, like that kind of Wizards thing. lightning or something? Yeah, something yeah. like that. I'd probably take Eviscerate. I know that it's not it's not instant speed, which kind of stinks, mm. and it's more expensive than cast down. Eviscerate's for four, but it's destroy target creature, and Eviscerate is only non-legendary. So. That's true. Yeah. I know I'll buy that. Yeah. Um, I have kind of three picks that I'm, I would go between. So my first one, which I'm probably not going to pick is Adelie's. This card's awesome. Um, but it's not amazing. You really have to be into the wizard spell theme. Um, but it is pretty good. It's interesting. The other two cards though are Vicious Offering, which is just amazing removal or Skizix, which is just super strong. Yeah. Um, and I think Skizix would be the pick, right? Like it's just, it's got so much board presence. You can throw it out there for four if you need to get in the last few points of damage, or you can kick it and keep it around. It's a 5-3 with Trample and Haste. 
you didn't kick it, you have to sacrifice it at right. the end of the turn. Um, but that would probably be my pick. I love Skizix. Yeah. Good card. Nice. Yeah. Very nice. Um, really stoked to have Dominaria packs. Again, special thank you to Grand Slam for sponsoring that. Yeah, huge um, thanks. We're working with them a lot more again, so we're excited about that, and we will keep you guys updated Absolutely. as we move forward with that, obviously. Uh, if you're local and haven't been <laughs> recently, go back. They are. They've rearranged. Yeah. They've they've much, renovated everything. It looks hell sweet. <laughs> yes, that. Uh, Demonet. Oh wait, we weren't. Um. All right. We had a family friendly tag. Yeah. <laughs> Guys, uh, we really wow, appreciate. It took you. me ninety two episodes. No, it didn't. No, it, it didn't. Seventy episodes. No, it took you way less than that. Um. Anyway. <laughs> Guys, uh, thank you so much for sticking around for this episode. <laughs> We're going to get Will to bed, because he is... <laughs> I am ruining everything, so I'm going to stand very still. Yeah. Anyway, we really appreciate you guys sticking around. Hopefully you enjoyed it. Make sure to answer that question of the week. But on that note, we are going to get out of here. My name is Kevin. My name is Will. This has been It Resolves, guys. I spilled your water.